Um, no, I mean, honestly, I feel very fortunate for the opportunity to compete against a guy like BJ. Again, like when, you know, a lot of times people are like, oh, uh, that guy's a legend. Like, that, he is an actual legend. He's someone that, that I've learned so much from and try to pattern myself after. So honestly, it's a little bit bittersweet because it's someone that I that I respect very much and look up to, and I'm very happy to get a good result, even happier to not get beat the fuck up. But also, uh, you know, having been on the other side, you know, you know, it's, it's it can suck. So it's, uh, again, I'm very happy, but it goes both ways. But ultimately, something else I'd like to say is, hey, to my buddy Alex um, from Texas, who wasn't able to be here uh, as a result of the venue change, but uh, looking forward to seeing him soon. What happened with Alex? Um, well, you know, they, they, he's a buddy of mine, he's 11 years old, I think, and um, he was getting ready to go to, they were coming to Vegas, and then with the venue change, they weren't able to, it's pretty expensive, like my wife had to get a plane ticket from D.C. to here with like three days notice, and went from like normal 250 bucks to about 800 bucks, which wasn't great, but fortunately we are uh, we won, so we can afford it, uh, for now. Uh, but uh, yeah, other than that, I'm just... That was a shame that he wasn't able to be here, but I was glad to be able to, to get a good result for, for my fans and my friends. Do you speak to BJ at all and kind of impart those words on him, like, hey, you know, you're a little... Um, well, it's yeah. tough, you know, because it's someone, particularly at, at a time like that, you don't want to walk over and like I'm not trying to like get be, be weird and like get in someone's face, you know. But at, at the same time, you know, I I hope that uh, we cross paths at some point in the future because honestly, I'd love to train with them and ask them a bunch of questions. And um, but you know, right after a fight, no no one likes the other person running over and, and Yoel Romero and you, you know. <laughs> Granted, if it was Yoel, I wouldn't be able to do anything about it, but no one likes that. <laughs> Obviously, you're known for your leg locks. Uh, you never know. Honestly, I didn't expect him to tap because it's, it's BJ and you, some people, he's rubbery and, and some people just don't tap. His knee popped pretty good. I don't know if it if it's torn, I'm not sure, but it went like crack, crack, pop, which when you put a heel hook on with, with pace, a lot of times that can be the result. But uh, I, I think a big mistake that people make uh, as a grappler getting into MMA is expecting anyone to tap to anything because that sets you. I've seen so many fights with the jiu-jitsu guy, you know, granted we were both jiu-jitsu guy, but let's say the grappler, you know, puts a grappling style beating on somebody for the first round and puts them in every Thing under the sun but then they don't tap and the person who did dealt out the ass whooping gets up looking like how did this happen and then the other person completely unmarked goes back to their corner comes out for round two and is not playing around so um, you know honestly I was ready for the for the full distance and uh, but it's nice to get a finish and, and get out early um, I don't think anybody's get kicked in the knee so I, that's kind of how I thought about it but uh, I wouldn't like it if you kissed me in the knee so with that thinking in line, I, that's what we were shooting for. But uh, it probably couldn't hurt. Yeah. yeah. Was that was that submission of the year in your opinion? I, I one, you know, MMA Twitter saying submission of the year. Oh yeah, cool. I can't speak to any of that. It is the end of the year, so maybe there's the uh, the primacy recency thing. So yeah, that'll actually probably play in our favor. But um, you know, again. Um, I don't know how they judge those sort of things. I was just happy to get to work on something that my friend Tom Lee over there invented. And uh, that's pretty cool because that's a taekwondo black belt inventing jiu-jitsu moves. And uh, that was one of the, I was really glad to be able to, to put into play something that, that we've been working on together for some time. Why do we see you so in the Why is that? Why, why the long um, honestly, you know, there's, there's a bunch of things. I've got stuff going on at home. I'm, you know, I actually just had a little boy, um, which is, oh, thank you so much. Um, and uh, you never know what, the fight game's unpredictable, you know. Sometimes you fight, I remember when I was on Ultimate Fighter, I fought, I think, four times in three months, which was pretty neat, but a little much probably, um, unless you're Donald Cerrone, in which case, carry on. But uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. Both people have to sign up, and, you know, I, I've accepted a bunch of other fights, and, and unfortunately, people were a little bit hesitant to get involved. BJ is not afraid of anybody, and, and justifiably not afraid of anybody. So that was pretty neat to get to compete against someone, both with his skill set and his, and his uh, of course, credentials, but, but also just the mentality that he has, I think. Um, you know, I, I would hope to one day, if I could, again, pattern just that the approach that he's had to say, you know, he fought Leota Machida. That's amazing. He one of he's like, yeah, I think I'm going to go to welterweight. That, that's unbelievable. And uh, the bravery that that takes is, is not to be understated. So ultimately, I, I would just say that uh, it's hard to say why, but I, I'm hoping that the trend doesn't continue. Otherwise, I'll probably see you guys in 2023 because it's been one year between gray, the first one in gray, two years gray to this. So that'd be like four years from now, and uh, that'd be getting a little rough. Why do you think people are so... I can't speak to that. You know, I mean, I, I've, I want to fight the best people available. I want to fight someone in the top 10 um, now, or I would like to fight someone in the top 15. And, uh, you know, if, if people chuckle at that, maybe they do, maybe they don't. Part of the reason they do is because I don't get to fight anybody. And uh, also, if you want to see me get beat up, that's the fastest way to do it. Um, but, uh, it, oh yeah, definitely a featherweight. I mean, I weighed in for this at 154 without 
you know, I'm featherweight. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, it, it would be nice to face someone in the top 10, top 15 at the very least. Um, but both, not, I don't really care about the ranking. I just care about the, the challenge of the opponent. And, and again, those guys, I respect them very much. They're very good. I would, I would look forward to facing anybody of that caliber. Anyone in particular? You know, I mean, I, honestly, I, I just... I come from the martial arts world, and I don't come. I'm a martial arts guy that can fight at a high level. I'm not a professional fighter, you know. Like uh, so, ultimately, I don't like to poke at people. I don't like to disrespect anybody. And even if it's not perceived that way, I know nobody likes getting called out. So, ultimately, I, we'll see what happens. But I, I, I've got into this for sporting reasons and to see what happens and, and try to become the best that I can be. So, uh, I guess that's all I can say. I think everyone agrees that BJ Penn is a legend, but oh, yeah. I think most people also agree that he's a bit past his prime and he's in a tough losing streak now. Um, you know, it, it's it's tough as as a fan of his. Uh, you know, I I feel I can understand both perspectives. You know, it, it's a. Uh he, obviously, he's a little bit older, but but also the the game has continued to to evolve, you know. And and unless it's difficult, and it's evolved, we've stood on his shoulders, you know. So no one, it's not as if people could get to where we are without the Fedor Emelianenkos, without the BJ Pens, and uh, and I think it's very important to remember that. But it's it's also tough if everyone's gotten to watch you fight for 15 years and also figure out what you're up to, and then on top of that, copy a bunch of what you're up to, to, to still be able to win generation after generation is very challenging. And BJ went through multiple generations of fighters, and, and I know that he's still got plenty left. It's just a question of whether or not, I guess, he wants to do that. But it, I can also understand the perspective of people who say, hey, man, you've done enough already. Why take the risk? Why, why take the, the physical toll? Uh, but, but ultimately, telling another person what to do with their life, I'm not very comfortable with that. Well, how much preparation did you make when you find out that BJ can Oh, oh man, I was ecstatic when I found out that I was fighting BJ. Um, I, I prepared, I had a four month training camp because I, I haven't fought in two years, so I, I did a bunch of practice fights. I spent probably my entire show paycheck on training camp just to make sure I'm not playing around. You know, win, lose, or draw, I can say that I'll give it my best, and, and that means there's a financial commitment to, to doing that. You know, I have to I go to TriStar, train, I bring a bunch of my friends to Virginia, I go here, I go there, I go see Kenny Florian. You know, I, I was very, very fortunate. I brought a ton of really high-level martial artists to, to Virginia with me and then brought some of us from Virginia to TriStar, and, uh, you know, there's a financial cost associated with that, but it's something that I'm happy to, to undertake in order to pursue Are my best. Else? I'm sorry? Are you calling out any... Uh, no, I, I'm just saying I'll fight anybody that's good and let's go, sign up. Kenny Florian was going to be in your corner tonight. Yes. And the change kind of, kind of messed with that too. Yeah, that, that was a shame. You know, Kenny's been coaching me since 2014. He's made an unbelievable difference. I feel like I have the best, you know, at least I'm biased, of course, but the best corner team I could possibly ask for in Faraz Zahabi, Kenny Florian, Tan Lee. These are, these are some of the most introspective and thoughtful people I've ever met in the fight game. I, I feel incredibly fortunate to have their support. Kenny's been, been helping... You know, he, he was the guy that I looked at and then I went, hey, I, I, I want to be like him. Because he's, he, particularly in the era of everyone being on steroids, he wasn't. And he's not overwhelmingly physically powerful, but he went from getting manhandled by Diego Sanchez on, on Ultimate Fighter in the first one to just improve, 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 improve. And he fought the best. It was, it's an unbelievable thing. And, and so he's a guy like BJ Penn uh, that, that I look up to immensely very much and, and would hope to pattern myself after. So I was ashamed that, that Kenny wasn't able to be here. But, you know, we met up last night. We talked constantly. He, he was definitely, I, I believe, here in spirit. And, and I really appreciated that. Kenny Florian, he's at the uh, Fox Sports Studio with yeah. Karen Bryan, Michael Bisman. Yeah. Want me to say that he was on his feet the entire time. He's incredibly proud of you. Oh and, man, uh, thank you. Know, you. Like, he was, couldn't even sit down. So. Oh man, I'm, I'm thank him so much. Excited. Yeah, Kenny's the best. Is it MMA? Is it just a, a side project for you? Or is this like, are you like, no, this is what I do, this is how I'm going to make my living? I like that you imply that I have other bigger things going on. I, I, I appreciate that that, 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 that just, that that could be the case. But, uh, no, I'm not smart enough for that. So we'll, um, it, no, MMA is like one. Oh, man, I'm trying to get into the game, but the, it's the seed money, man. It's tough. But, you know. I was about to say, if Conor McGregor wants to fight, he can beat me up. I'll take the page. <laughs> but uh, it's absolutely worth it. But and then I hope he, if he, oh my God, if he misses weight, that'd be the best. Because he's, oh man, because he's gonna get a bunch. But anyway, yeah. All right, we'll talk later. But um, but uh, oh yeah, no, I've, I've trained with Conor a little bit. He's amazing, obviously, phenomenal martial artist, and uh, deserves every bit of success he's had. Yeah, I look forward to seeing him come back and fight again if he uh, if he feels up to it. Um, but. Uh, yeah, no, it, it's just I've got a, other things going on. I have my own gym. I have some other stuff. I try to help my friends in various parts of the world. You know, I, I've gotten a lot of help from a lot of people to, to be here today. And, 
and, and I owe it to them to, to do my best to, to help as well. Um, but no, MMA is something I take very seriously, but at the same time, I remember being in the jiu-jitsu world, I was good enough to be close to maybe like ADCC top, like not consistently, but like good enough that on a good day I could have won. But it was a combination of I didn't always wrestle my best, and other times like it, the jiu-jitsu world, particularly back then, was like ridiculously corrupt. <laughs> And uh, it, so you'd have things taken from you. And it, it taught me a lot about just controlling what you can control, doing my best. I can't control if I ever fight in the UFC again. I really hope I do. I would look forward to it. I can't control if, if they cut me tomorrow. Um, I, again, hope that doesn't happen. But if they do, well, I'll carry on and just do my best to keep improving as a martial artist. And this is just a venue for that. So being UFC champion would not change my life. Although it would, I could get a better car. But other than that, like, but on a personal level, like, and I do this to, to try to just be my best. That's all I can say. Thank you all so much. Thank you.